Hi, Microbe Hunter here. This here is a low cost introductory microscope. And today I want to convert this one to a polarized light microscope. It's not that difficult to do, but I did some tinkering today and I also took the microscope apart. So let's have a look at it. So first of all, I want to show you some pictures in polarized light, uh, simply to make you a little bit motivated to try out this uh, method. This here, for example, is uh, crystallized vitamin C. I've actually made separate video, link uh, is uh, below in the description. And these things here, these are potato starch grains, and you can also now see that in polarized light, they start to shine up nicely on a dark background. If you want to do polarized light microscopy, all you need is you need those 3D glasses. Uh, be careful, not all of them work. Uh, they have to be or should be real D compatible, whatever that means. Um, I also put a link into the description here. And now you have to place them over each other in a correct orientation and you have to rotate them against each other. And this orientation does not work, for example, because it does not turn completely black. This one here is already better, but you can still still see that a little bit of light is able to go through. Might be a little bit difficult to see here on the video, uh, but there is one orientation um, that if you try that out, uh, it will actually be completely uh, black. So and that's the one that we want, okay? And if you're able to find this orientation and you better remember um, how uh, they are placed on top of each other, because this is uh, the orientation that we have to retain when we put it under the microscope. So right now I'm simply placing uh, the filters on the stage, the specimen slide on top, and then uh, the second filter. My recommendation is, is that you buy yourself some linear polarizing filters. They're a little bit more expensive than those uh, 3D glasses, but they make life a little bit easier because the orientation and the side is not so important or not important at all. Uh, those 3D glasses, they have so-called circular polarizing filters and there the orientation is kind of important. And if you accidentally flip the filter around, you won't get a proper effect. Yeah, so I labeled uh, the filters uh, so that I'm not going to confuse the orientation. Um, and then I started uh, to cut it out, but then of course you're also cutting away the label. <laughs> That's a little bit something unforeseeable. And I decided to simply place uh, one of the filters um, on top of, of an eyepiece, uh, just like this. Um, and I wanted to try this out uh, this way. Uh, so instead of uh, simply placing one filter on top of the slide where it could get in contact with the mounting medium or the specimen, I thought that this is actually a much more uh, convenient uh, way of uh, solving the issue. Well, I think that the filter directly stuck onto the front of the eyepiece looks kind of ugly, so I do want to hide it a little bit. Yeah, some um, eyepieces uh, can be uh, taken apart. So I started again uh, over with a slightly larger filter and I tried to find now a place uh, in the eyepiece itself where I could uh, place the filter. I could um, unscrew it. Uh, please be careful that the lens in there, the front lens, has to be placed in, in the correct orientation. In this case, the flat surface of the lens is on top. Um, and I simply placed the filter on top here. I marked the filter, I scored the filter with a sharp uh, pointed uh, object um, simply so that I know um, where to cut out the filter. And then after about uh, three minutes of intense work, I had in my hands a beautiful round a polarizing filter, uh, which you then could directly place them into the eyepiece. Now, um, if you do not want to use polarized light microscopy anymore, then it's enough that you simply remove uh, one of these filters. So if you do not want to remove the filter um, of the eyepiece, then you can also remove uh, the filter, which is uh, placed uh, beneath the specimen, and then you will also lose again the polarization effect. But uh, in any case, that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Put the eyepiece back together. Well, that was uh, kind of easy, um, but I do have a 3D printer and I wanted to now try to construct a filter holder using my 3D printer. Well, there is the saying, if you have uh, a hammer, then every problem appears to be like a nail. And uh, same here, uh, I have a 3D printer right now. So I simply said, I have to simply try this out uh, using a, my new 3D printer. So I designed uh, um, a, a filter holder for my eyepiece. And after about half an hour of printing time, I had a very nice uh, yeah, a filter holder. Um, and uh, what I'm, all I have to do now is I have to glue the filter into this uh, plastic cap, uh, which can then be placed directly um, on top uh, of the eyepiece. 
And here we go again. And make sure that the filter is glued on with the correct side um, because these are circular polarizing filters and uh, here the orientation is very important. Yeah, and then it goes uh, into the newly made cap. Um, and I used again uh, some glue to fix uh, the ring into place. Uh, here I put some glue on a screwdriver because it could not reach uh, the edge uh, with the, the glue bottle. And yeah, it simply goes over the top of the eyepiece and uh, I was all happy and I decided now, okay, uh, what I'm gonna do next, I'm going to put the other filter um, on the bottom of the stage. So I simply tried to now um, place it directly over one of these uh, holes here, which these holes are, uh, which are supposed to control the aperture. Well, they are too large anyway, in my view. So I simply glued uh, a filter directly on top of it. Uh, and I simply also wanted to unmount it to check the other side. And uh, it's possible now, if you rotate the eyepiece, that you can see that now it still works quite well. So the orientation is correct. And I simply said, okay, and now I wanna have to try it out. So put some uh, synthetic fibers, um, in under the microscope and I rotated the eyepiece I'm using right now, mobile phone camera. Look at this, not a lot happens. The background does not turn completely black. So this is not supposed to be, that's kind of strange. Well, my first uh, idea was somehow that the plastic lens in the stage caused the light to become depolarized. Uh, so what I've done is I then moved the filter on top of the plastic lens, but unfortunately this also did not uh, produce the desired results. So I had to continue to look for the mistake. Well, uh, after some more experimentation, I did find out that the reason why I did not get a proper um, effect is, is because uh, there is a prism here um, in, in top of, uh, yeah, in the tube of the microscope. And this prism is responsible for depolarizing um, everything. So it kind of messes up everything. So what I have to do is I have to move the filter away from the eyepiece to below the prism and I have to find a place uh, somewhere but I don't really want to place the filter directly um, on the slide. Um, so I have to uh, look for a different possibility here. Well, and ultimately I did find a place. I carefully detached the revolving nose piece and look what you see here. These are a lot of small steel balls because the whole thing, is, there's a ball bearing. And uh, honestly, this is the place where I tried to put the filter here, but the tape wouldn't hold. Look at this, it simply wouldn't stick. The reason, reason is, is because there's simply so much grease in the area that the glue simply wouldn't hold. And here, here I lost some of the steel balls and something you gotta be careful. So what do we learn from this? Uh, don't uh, take apart your microscope until, unless you really have to. Don't touch a running system. In other words, it took me several minutes to actually uh, put the microscope back together again. And I almost lost a few of these tiny steel balls. Yeah, so I tried to find another place uh, right here above the objective. And as a matter of fact, yes, this system is actually the system that, uh, that seemed to, to have worked quite well. Simply place the one of the filters in there and now look at these fibers, nice and dark background as it's supposed to be. Was again a little bit more motivated than before. And the filter here on top it was kind of very difficult to rotate, however, right? And I did not want to scratch the plastic lens. So there's gotta be a better solution. Yeah, and so I decided finally to also 3D print uh, a stage adapter. I have to admit, it's probably a little bit of an overkill. It would be much faster if I simply would have used a little bit of cardboard or some plywood to make such an adapter. So yeah, so back into my very simple CAD, computer aided design program. And this is what I designed uh, this, uh, Contraption goes on top of the stage. Uh, took me about, I don't know, an hour to, to design the whole thing here. All of the measurements and another hour to get the whole thing printed. Um, and yeah, um, the original uh, impression was quite uh, quite good. Again, I had to glue uh, the filter on top of the filter holder here. And now you also notice that there is a small handle here, um, which allows me to rotate the filter much more easily. The whole thing goes directly on the stage, as you can see here. And uh, then also the filter goes into the hole there and it was very, very unstable. Look at this. It was very unstable. I tried to play place a slide now on top of, of the filter holder. And by moving the filter back and forth, I was also moving the slide and the whole thing was simply, yeah, way too unstable. So I said, okay, 
back to the drawing board um, I need to improve the system again a little bit so what I've done is, is I've designed a spacer um, which basically removes or increases the distance uh, between the filter um, and the slide here um, so that the rotating filter holder does not get in contact with the slide so now you can see how the system is supposed to work um, and uh, the slide is now located above above the filter and it can now be freely rotated. Yeah, so this is uh, basically the system that I tried and now everything seems to be much more stable. I was uh, quite happy and satisfied. Here's a slightly closer look. And uh, the net la last thing I had to do now is, is I had to um, install the filters um, also in the remaining um, objectives and this is uh, also something that I've done here. And uh, yeah, sometimes it was not so easy to place the filter in there uh, because there was not enough uh, space. but. Ultimately, um, yeah, it did work. Last check here again. Sometimes the filters fell out before it could actually connect uh, the uh, objective. But it seems to be okay. And now let's uh, test the whole thing again. And uh, this time I'm again using the fibers. And look, when this is at uh, four times with a four times objective, and look when you rotate the filter, um, that works quite nicely. This is the ten times objective, and uh, rotating the filter gives you a very nice dark background and if you don't like to work with polarized light then you simply remove one of the two filters again. Yeah, so, so that's it. Um, it finally did work um, after a long uh, series of uh, trial and errors. Um, I think uh, at changing uh, your microscope for polarized light is definitely something worth trying. Um, I think uh, 3D printing indeed is not really worth it uh, because there's so many easier ways um, and uh, I would say experiment a little bit, uh, use some cardboard, use some plywood um, or simply place uh, the filters directly beneath and on top of the slide. It also works. I want to invite you over now to uh, my uh, web shop, uh, the microscopy web shop. I'll put a link below where you can buy a lot of microscopy accessories and I would also like to invite you to visit my other YouTube channels uh, that I have which are microscopy related. All links are below in the description. I wish you as always a happy micro hunting and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.